That's fine. So, pleasure to be with you. Thank you uh, uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk at you a little bit this afternoon. I am coming to you from Maputo, Mozambique this morning or this afternoon. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the world looks uh, more similar from here uh, and from Europe that it has maybe any time in you know, my lifetime. Uh, but I've been thinking about a number of things uh, and it's just a, a pleasure to share some of these with you. Um, here we go. All right. So, you know, uh, 2019, uh, 2020, uh, 2021, uh, I think it's possible that today uh, being a pessimist, having a pessimistic view, uh, being a little jaded is, is maybe the most easily defensible position uh, in any time, you know, sort of in my lifetime. And I think that uh, what a, you know, geez, the last decade since 2020, or maybe that's just how it feels, is proof enough. I mean, there's this guy, uh, untold human suffering uh, as a result, there is hate and uh, there's environmental destruction. Uh, you know, the future, I think, today more than at any time, uh, um, again, I can sort of reference it in my lifetime, but it certainly feels big. Um, it's become less predictable. It's become less solid uh, than, than I've known. And I think that we all are in a similar situation in which uh, there is a future, but we don't know what it looks like. And we don't have a map for how we go forward into it. Um, you know, but I don't think that it's without hope. And I think that every day I'm, I'm lucky to get up and go to schools uh, with people who do work for children uh, because they believe in them. Um, and I think that uh, it is teachers who give me hope because children are the wellspring of our humanity. Uh, these are my children. Um, they are the ones who will live into the future after us. They're the ones who will love into the future after us and who will build the world that follows them. And every day you work with and for them um, and send for that future that you won't get to experience. You know, probably like many of you, when I think of the concept of, of care and of love, I think of obscure Victorian era Russian psychologists who there is one of my daughters right now, honey, I'm sorry, I'm doing something. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, I was saying, like many of you, you probably uh, think of obscure Victorian era Russian psychologists who uh, like Lev Vygotsky here, right? Lev Vygotsky is the uh, progenitor of the concept of the zone of proximal development. And the zone of proximal development to me is pretty neat. The zone of proximal development is this area, this time period in which a learner goes from not being able to do something or not being able to understand something at all to being able to do it or understand it with help and support, eventually to being able to do it and understand it independently. And uh, that you spend time, if you're effective, if you, and I assume people in this room are effective, uh, then that means that you believe that the children you work with every day can learn. And that means that you provide care for their learning. And I want to argue that I think that that means that you do your job with love every day, that you love the kids in your care. You as teachers, if you're effective, understand the beauty of supports. The walls don't have to stand on their own. A, a learner's value is not determined by the their ability to do something already before they come into your classroom and you provide the supports and you guide them on their way you understand pathways you understand that um, again we might not know exactly where we're going or we may have an idea where we're going but we can go in many directions and uh, again i think that's embedded in a belief in the people that you work with the young people and uh, uh courage that by doing the work together, you can get where you wish to go. And I think this is true for adults. And I know that it's true for children that 
it is love and it is care that create psychologically safe spaces. It takes nurturing of positive emotions because we can't remember anything and we can't learn anything without positive emotions about what we're doing. And uh, somebody very wise said to me that the idea of a loving administrator makes them throw up in their mouth a little. And I, I understand that. that. That makes some intuitive sense to me. But hey, I'm, I'm an administrator. I'm an uh, educational leader. And uh, you are my people. I'm a teacher too. Together we are educators. And I think when this gig is working and when learning is working, we are showing up every day for our children in our care and for the adults around us with love. Um, do I think that this is going to... Uh, you know, end violence and, and hate you. Know, I, I really don't. And do I think that our work is going to liberate uh, us all from structures of oppression and uh, prioritization of, of uber elite interests? I, I don't believe that. But the, I believe there is in fact light. And uh, even if I don't know where it's coming from exactly in this future, and there's a book entitled Radical Hope. Uh, by an author named Jonathan Lear. And he sets out a, you know, it's a historical concept he, he's working on, but, and I don't think our moment is quite as dire as the one he's focused on, but he defines radical hope as hope for a future that we can't possibly imagine. And when I think about that future and who will be living in it and how they're prepared, um, I'm glad that they're with us and I'm glad that they're with you. And I get my hope from the love you bring to children every day. So. Thank you very much.